live from Las Vegas, it's The Cube, covering Magento Imagine 2019. Brought to you by Adobe. Hi, welcome back to The Cube. Lisa Martin with Jeff Frick at Imagine 2019, the win Las Vegas with about 3,500 customers, lots of partners, lots of developers, a lot of energy here. And speaking of energy, we have Jason Woosley, VP of Commerce at Adobe. Jason, you came onto the stage this morning from the clouds, suspended. Talk about energy. It was a lot of energy and there was a message behind it, right? <clears throat> I mean, we really are talking about our cloud penetration and how that is the future. So, you know, I got to do something really cool and uh, check something off the bucket list where I actually did descend from the, from the sky onto the stage. It was the best Imagine entrance I've ever done. <laughs> uh, and uh, really does talk about, you know, how important our cloud strategy is. Thanks for having me on, by the way. Our Absolutely. pleasure. So, a lot of energy here. Again, community, community, community. We go to so many shows, so many people are desperate to engage developers. And you guys have that in your core. It's been there from day one continues to be such an important part of who you are as well as the road forward. It's the reason for why we are where we are today. I mean, bar none, right? Our community, this ecosystem, and it's not something you can buy, it's not something you can, you can even intentionally build. You have to nurture, you have to create a platform that, that speaks to a large, large audience, and then you just got to make sure that you're treating those developers and the partners really, really well, empowering them to really differentiate that experience at the last mile. And you know, it is, it's a flywheel effect. You end up with this incredible community that's anxious to contribute back into our code base and they have made, what you see at this conference is a result of that community. It's not anything that Magento could do. It's not anything that Adobe could do. Uh, it is just something that has to organically happen and then you have to nurture the heck out of it. And that's, that's really what we've done. And this is a community that you said has grown organically to several hundred thousand people who, to, I feel like to say that they're influential to Magento, the technologies, is actually an understatement with how much, how, again, I think influential is the wrong word. They're stronger than that. They're absolutely core to it, right? I mean, they, they're an extension of our, our development methodology. You know, I like to think about, you know, I run engineering as, as part of my organization, and everybody in my group is customer facing. Just like everybody in our community is customer facing. And so we've tried to tear down the walls that separate our community members from our internal core engineers because it creates this incredible diversity of perspective that you can't find anywhere else. I mean, no, no matter how much I invest in, in you know, broadly diverse engineering teams across the globe, 300,000 engineers that call themselves Magento developers, don't pay, take a paycheck from Adobe, but contribute back to our code base, influence our roadmap, and really show us the way. It's, it's an incredible phenomenon. In, I was going to say, in the last year since the announcement of the Adobe acquisition and the actual completion of that six, seven months ago, how has that community reacted, strengthened? What have been some of your surprising observations about the communities. It is surprising, state. and I'll tell you why. I think we came into the acquisition with a lot of apprehension, right? There was a concern that, you know, Adobe's too big, they're too corporate, they don't really love open source. All untrue, right? Adobe has incredible open source initiatives already inside, but you don't hear a lot about it. And so our community, I think, was it's a little bit concerned about, you know, does the level of investment go down? Does the, um, you know, all of our, our ability to promote that product, is that, is that we start to back off of that. And of course, we have not done that at all. And in fact, what we've seen is that our community loves the Adobe acquisition. They see the opportunity just as clearly as we do. We have more than triple digit growth in the number of, of community contributions coming into us since the acquisition last year. It is the clear sign that the, the ecosystem is fully on board with where we're right. going. Well, clearly the Adobe suite provides so much you know, gunpowder to, to power the commerce that's been at the core of Magento from the beginning. I mean, it's, it almost begs the question, how, why didn't this happen a long, long time ago? I, I, you know, I think, that's, <laughs> I think there's, there's something to be said about that. And, uh, but you know what, it took Adobe a while. They picked the right platform. We're very confident of that. Um, and you know, their investment in community is actually paying off on the Adobe side, right? When you think about digital experience products, they are now more active than ever in open source projects. We've got you know, folks from uh, Adobe Experience Manager that are writing code and contributing to Magento, which is, it's, it's absolutely terrific. And they're now talking about how do we get the ability to kind of 
create that contribution mechanism uh, and at least create a platform concept where you know, everybody plays, it's an equal playing field, you can service small, you can service large, uh, and, and it just brings everybody together to solve these common, complex problems right. that our joint merchants face. I, I don't know how many times you've been on stage in the last two days, but a, a couple. But one of the themes you really, you know, you didn't pound on the table, but you, you basically pound on the table and said, we are still totally 100% behind SMB. Absolutely. It's our core, we're not giving that up. You know, we built this market together, right? This is, this was, this is what made Magento what it is. It's where we play the best. We know it better than anybody else in the industry, and we're not retreating. We're, we're doubling down. We've got, we've got ground to take in the mid-market, and I can't wait to do it. Right, but what's, what's wild is you're enabling the mid-market to compete with the tools of the big guys. So, announcements around the integration with Amazon, announcements around integration with Google. So it's a kind of an interesting place for small retailers, small merchants, they've got to compete in this world, so you're really giving them an, uh, an opportunity to both play in what might be a big competitor, as well as leverage that ecosystem and assets, as well as doing it within their own brick and mortar or their own sites. And that's a terrific point. I think one of the reasons we do that is we've seen consumer expectations rising through the roof, right? I mean, everything from you know, fast shipping is now, is now one day. Uh, and it, it, it wasn't very long ago that fast shipping was, if you could get it within a week, that was pretty darn quick. Right. Uh, but now fast shipping is one day, and that's across the board. Consumers are expecting frictionless payment. Uh, they're expecting, you know, buy online, pick up in store, omni-channel capabilities, really all of these capabilities. And a consumer, a shopper, doesn't care whether you're big or small. What they care about is the experience that they consume when they interact with your brand. And so bringing the tools of the enterprise to the mid-market allows them to, to compete on a more level playing field, and that's really where you generate all this great innovation, and that's where you see uh, you know, these smaller merchants that are really able to you know, drive into something that you know, may not have been a, a, a core target for some of the larger enterprises, but they find a niche and they're able to deliver, but they have the same personalization needs, they have the same logistics needs, all of that is, is not changed just because they're a smaller organization. And so it's really on us to be able to provide them the tooling and the access to the capabilities that let them compete with the larger merchants. Yeah, because you're right, as consumers, which we are every day, we don't care if they're a big or small company or what technologies they, well, no, we do care to a degree that we can start something from a mobile phone, have a great seamless experience yep. that's not going to cause me to churn because I'm not going to be able to find what I want. I want it to be personalized. I want them to know enough about me in a creepy, non, in a non creepy way as you say, That's right, no, if, it's, if, magic. It's, if it's good, it's magic. <laughs> if it's bad, it's creepy. Right, regardless <laughs> of recommendation of, engines. Yeah. And no, expect that's that they have what I want. <laughs> But also what you're doing now is giving these SMBs, these smaller organizations, the ability to harness this sort of symbiotic data power between Adobe and Magento for advertising, analytics, marketing, commerce, to be able to have that wealth of knowledge to make that experience exactly what that consumer expects. Exactly right, I mean it's about bringing the behavioral data and the transactional data together to really get a 360 degree view of individual customers, and guess what? There's too much raw data there for Excel to ever be able to tell you anything. You've <laughs> got to rely on things like artificial intelligence and machine learning, so things like Adobe Sensei, to really derive insights out of that mass set of data, but that's the way you create those personalized experiences. You have to employ those, those techniques to get there. Right, I just wanted to unpack the Sensei uh, announcement a little bit, because I think that's really interesting. You know, AI's been a great buzzword, we see it a lot of places, you know, our, our Google, Google email now automatically figures out what we want to reply <laughs> to our email. But it's, it's the integration of AI in applications is where we're really starting to see it come to market early, and, and this is a great example of you know, using the Adobe AI inside of Sensei on specific parts of the application to deliver a better, yeah. a better application, a better consumer experience. And we've got a great roadmap for rolling out uh, you know, artificial intelligence capabilities to Magento Commerce. It's one of the, the largest value adds that we'll do over the next 12 months, is really you know, bringing those capabilities around you know, recommendations, around uh, experience personalization and experience targeting, uh, around A-B testing, uh, and then you, know, you think a little bit into the future and suddenly you're looking at an AI that can give you pricing recommendations and campaign recommendations and you know, that is a, that's a world that we cannot wait to really explore fully in, in the commerce world because I think that those are the tools. You know, Amazon applies a lot of uh, dynamic pricing techniques right now. 
It's a really expensive process. I don't know a lot of small merchants that have access to the tools to do that. We're bringing those tools to small merchants and that's going to change, change the game fundamentally, I believe. In a way that they can do it almost themselves rather than having to have a team of resources which a small business doesn't have. And, and that is the name of the game for small business. You can't, you can't require them to have a data science team. You can't require them to have a, an IT staff or a, a web development team. You've got to give them everything they need so that they can focus on retail, what they know best, merchandising to their customers, uh, and you know, managing their inventory, driving the, the correct margins, and then making sure that they're able to grow the lifetime value of their customers, right? That's the, the holy grail for retail, is when you can actually optimize against lifetime value. Because that's, it's, it's the number one thing that all merchants are chasing. Yeah, because you, you had the guy on the keynote yesterday. Um, the, I'm, I'm not in the demographic, I'm trying to remember the name of the... Oh, uh, uh, the, Troy, Troy Brown from Zoomies. From Zoomies, yeah. yeah. It is, I thought it was just really interesting, you know, just kind of rethinking retail, right? Retail is not dead, uh, but it's different. And, and you have to be different, and, and really to see how they have kind of taken their concept, I thought was pretty interesting, especially around the fact that he has no more fulfillment centers, he said. Yeah. That basically they're fulfilling from the store, they want to engage you in the store, it's a convenient thing, especially now we see Amazon packages are all getting stolen off of, of doorsteps. But, you know, enabling them to be creative around their customer engagement, not necessarily worry about how, the, how to run a bunch of A-B tests. They let, they let you do that complicated let stuff. Let us take on all of the complexity, and then they can actually benefit from the insights derived from that. And what, right. what Zoomies have done is, it's, it's a phenomenal story, right? I mean, you're going away from the centralized warehouse concept to really turning all of their stores into distribution centers, right? Uh, 704 uh, or so, uh, brick and mortar strong, where you know, they now have merchandise close to their consumers, uh, they have you know, the ability to do showcasing, buy online, pick up in store, all of the omni-channel techniques that are grabbing so much traction right now, and Zoomies has really capitalized. Right. Uh, they've done a terrific job, and it's great seeing it come from these really innovative retailers, right? I mean, that, that show last night with, with Zoomies was absolutely you know, fantastic. Their culture is super unique, highly energetic, uh, but they're driving technology forward in a way that you might not expect from you know, a, a skateboard apparel shop, right. right? Well, they're making Champion cool again. He came out on the Champion and was in the demo. I'm like, I didn't know Champion was a cool brand. Apparently again. it is cool it's now. It's cool now. You and I are both out of that demographic, <laughs> but uh, it, it is, it is a very good story. One of the things I'm, that we are hearing and seeing is that you know, we talked about personalization and this expectation that as consumers we bring to everything we buy, whatever it happens to be, but also this sort of looking at Amazon as an example of going, going to brick and mortar from purely online, the acquisition of Whole Foods, people still wanting to have that human interaction. We talk about it all the time when we talk about AI is that yeah. pretty much the common thread is yes AI and maybe yes online to a degree and then there's still that need and that demand for that personal face to face or maybe voice to voice to voice interaction. Yeah, well you know, it's, it's really for me, it's about taking that brand you know, experience and making sure that it's resonating across all of your digital properties as well as all of the physical properties, right? It is about you know, really leveraging, my brand experience is consistent across every place that I, I, I encounter my customers and I'm ready to transact anytime my customers are ready to transact. And when, you know, talking about Amazon, we've, we've announced some really cool stuff this uh, at Imagine on Amazon, a partnership where Amazon sellers can now have a branded storefront on Magento. This is allowing you know, folks that have done a terrific job selling in the, in the marketplace where you don't, you don't have a lot of opportunity for experience differentiation on the Amazon.com site, right? right? And that's, you know, it's a terrific marketplace. More than 50% of product searches are starting on Amazon now. So it's a reality that retailers need to uh, you know, find a way to come to grips with. Right. And what I'm really excited about is that those merchants that are doing really well on Amazon now have a new channel where they can create these branded experiences and really start differentiating themselves from their competitors. It's going to be a terrific story. It's uh, you know, branded storefronts uh, for Amazon sellers is the name of the, uh, name of the offering. Uh, and it's going to change the game for folks that have been exclusive Amazon, maybe thinking it's too hard to go you know, get a, uh, a, an online presence that actually represents my brand. Now it's a piece of cake, they've got a, a clean path to get there, and the capabilities go both ways, right? We also announced Amazon Sales Channel from Magento Commerce that allows you, you know, as a branded merchant, to go and participate on the Amazon Marketplace and have full control over your inventory, uh, your orders, and all of your catalog. 
so funny, you know, we talk about experience, but, but so much of, of, of retail execution is actually inventory execution, right? That's right? It's inventory management. That's where all your money sits. You can get it real upside down really quickly if you're not managing your inventory. Um, and if you don't have the right amount of inventory, especially as you say with same day delivery now being an expected, uh, expected behavior, and so, so to add the sophisticated tools on the back end to manage that inventory across that broad kind of distribution plane, if you will, all these different points of engagement is so critical to these guys to have any type of chance of success. Yeah, it, it is, it's absolutely critical. And, and you know, we've also got a Magento order management product that specializes in sort of global inventory control. Uh, we've made terrific investments there to bring new capabilities to make sure that those omni-channel aspirations are not something that you know, a merchant has to go invest a whole lot of, of money in changing their systems. I think you know, it, it, is, it is interesting to think about when you talk about you know, how B2C is really bleeding into B2B, right? That supply chain management, you know, 70% of our B2C merchants self-described actually engage in B2B workflows, and almost all of our B2B only merchants are really looking at how do I go B2B2C? Right. So there's this, this really great, great platform play happening, and the fact that, that Magento Commerce and Adobe Commerce Cloud can service B2B and B2C, and all the hybrids in between, really puts us in a differentiated position and, and helps merchants not have to go invest in multiple platform, you know, multiple maintainability, and then find some way to reconcile the, the inventory between the two. Right, and we had a quote earlier today, I, I can't remember who said it, but I thought it was great, where you know, no longer is the actual transaction the destination, right? but now you're bringing the transaction to you know, kind of the journey. It's a very different way to think about a traditional funnel. It isn't a traditional funnel that you work your way down to the end. Now you're inserting you know, commerce yep. opportunities, engagement opportunities, all along kind of this content flow. We kind of teased ourselves, right? We kind of lied to ourselves and said that, you know, this is a linear journey. And we've, we've all bought into it, right? You know all the steps, right? Uh, it's a, a, you know, discovery, awareness, I mean, all the way to post-purchase. It's not linear. People move in and out of the, each of those sections, and so being able to you know, transact where the, where the customer is ready to transact is right. critically important, and then you know, understanding that the post-sale service is the key to lifetime value. That's the, the other major learning that we're trying to take away from this, and that's why it's important to be at every point your customer is. Yeah, it's interesting, because especially with these things, because you don't sit down you don't sit down to work on your phone like we sat down to work at these things. That's right. And so your attention, Work's coming to you. It's coming to you and it's coming in little bits and oh by the way, there's a whole bunch of notifications coming on that could pull you away. Yeah. So it's a very different challenge in terms of in actual engagement when this is the primary vehicle. And, it, and increasingly it is the primary vehicle, Absolutely. right? More than 50% of traffic to uh, retail e-commerce site is generated from a mobile phone. Um, and, and, you know, and there are emerging uh, markets where that is the only internet connected device. And so, it, it is, it's the standard. You absolutely have to take mobile very seriously. There's a great set of technologies coming online to help us get there. It's called Progressive Web Application. It's going to change the game on how mobile is treated as a device. And in fact, it gets rid of the need for discrete um, native applications. So, instead of having an iOS app, an Android app, a you know, desktop storefront, a mobile storefront, and maybe a tablet storefront, plus you're online, uh, on, uh, brick and mortar, now you can actually say, my digital properties are serviced by one set of technologies. And that way when I make a change to one, it shows up in, in everything, I don't have all these different code bases to maintain. It's a total cost of ownership, uh, and really a, a time to market play across the board. I was going to say, faster time to market for sure. Absolutely. With far yeah. less resources. Well, and bringing it so that, it's, that you really have to invest in allowing your merchandisers to merchandise on your digital properties, right? If there is a, an engineer sitting between your merchandiser and the customer, that, that, that time lag and you know, even just, just trying to get it done, there's so much frustration there. So creating these self-service tools that really allow you know, non-technical merchandisers to go in, make adjustments to how they're selling products across all those channels very, very easily and in one place, that's going to return a ton of value uh, to our merchants. So it's another thing that we're super excited about. Yeah, you deliver that consistent experience that the consumer is expecting, and then, and we were talking to PayPal earlier, start to help companies uh, close that revenue gap of getting them from mobile to uh, per, you know, wanting to transact and making that whole process seamless. There's a $9 billion, op $9 billion opportunity in closing the mobile gap. When you think about abandoned carts and folks that you know, begin the checkout process, 
for whatever reason, likely they get frustrated and don't want to type in their credit card number or don't want to type in their address, and then they move to a, you know, a, another device or another store that's doing ch uh, checkout in a more frictionless way, the $9 billion opportunity if you close that. Wow, that's So huge. it's incredibly important. It is incredibly important. Well, Jason, we wish we had more time, but we thank you so much for stopping by theCUBE and talking with Jeff and me. So, it's such an exciting time. Sounds like developers are feeling embraced, the community is happy, customers are reacting well, so we can't wait to hear what's next next year. This is the best place to be in the world in commerce. Thank you guys so much for having me on. It's always a pleasure, and I've enjoyed it a lot. Oh, our pleasure as well, All Jason. Right. Thank you guys. Thanks, Jason. For Jeff Frick, I'm Lisa Martin at Imagine 2019 at the Win Las Vegas. Thanks for watching.